Tonight we're going to be working on my Mitsubishi Sato Buck S470D. I picked up this tractor at the beginning of the summer and I pretty much just ran with it as soon as I got it off the trailer uh, working on the property. And now it's winter, it's late fall if you want to call it that, and uh, I'm decided to go ahead and do the uh, maintenance on it. Probably put the cart before the horse, but I really wanted to get some things done. So, but it did give me time to make a little list of things that I need to get done on it. So, let's just go ahead and jump into it and see what all cannot happen tonight because that's pretty much what I'm running into. So, one of the first things I did whenever I bought it was I did replace some of the quick and easy stuff. I did change out the uh, air filter and I went ahead and flushed the radiator. The radiator was a pretty simple task. The radiator cap and then the, the fill is right there. Took only about a gallon of concentrated antifreeze and just a little bit of water. And it was flushed. It was good to go. This is the NAPA number that I used for replacing the air filter unit. It is the 6270. They had one in stock. It was pretty easy to do. And so that's why it was one of the few things I did do at the beginning of the, the summer. I went ahead and started changing the oil until I ran into this little issue. This head is stripped out. It's all messed up. And I think I'm going to go ahead and order a new one. I'm not sure if like uh, Napa is going to have one on hand. Looks like it also comes with a crush washer. And this was the tightest drain bolt that I've ever had to break loose. I had to use my half inch breaker bar with a pipe on it just to get enough leverage to get that thing broken loose. It was on there so tight. Man, that was like the hardest bolt I've ever had to break loose for a oil drain plug. And uh, it looks like it's not the first time someone's just cranked the ever living snot out of this thing. So what was gonna be a very easy task turned into me waiting for an oil plug. So now everything I wanted to do, which involves starting the tractor and moving it, eh, it well, it's been pretty much canceled. But let me go ahead and show you where the, uh, the drain plug is on the oil pan. Okay, here we are on the right side of the tractor, just uh, right next to the drive shaft. This would be considered like the passenger side of a car. But you can see that the oil plug is uh, right there. There's not a lot of room on this tractor because of the front end loader. But uh, you can fit a very large breaker bar to get it loose if needed. Another thing that I did was go ahead and changed out some of the Zerk fittings that were uh, getting in the way. This Zerk fitting actually was a elbow and it was an old school Zerk fitting. It's probably the original one from the tractor. But the way it sat and the way it was tightened down was it would catch my shoelace every time I was operating the clutch. And yes, that's the clutch right there. So every time I would depress that guy or get on or dismount the tractor, somehow my shoelace wrapped around it and would get caught and I don't know, it I really don't want to die on this thing. It's kind of scary enough as it is uh, whenever you're operating a piece of equipment that you've never really operated before. So I went ahead and I, I changed out as many Zerk fittings as I could. Just figured it'd be cheap insurance. Some of them were kind of plugged up. So you have two of them right over here. Pretty much all your Zerk fittings are going to be following your uh, steering uh, linkages. So you got one here, uh, one here on the tie rod down below. Let's see if I can find that guy. It should be somewhere right around there. And like I said, that was the one that kind of followed the shaft up there for the, uh, the Zerk fitting of death that I'm going to go ahead and call it. You went ahead and had another Zerk fitting, which is on the other end of that tie rod right there. And then don't forget your kingpin, the one that pivots your axle on the front. You got one right here. I tried to change this guy out, but it had a different thread uh, pitch to it. Okay, so this is kind of a decent shot to show you these last two Zerk fittings that are on this tractor that I know of so far. If I find any more, I'll let you know. But it pretty much runs on the shaft that uh, operates the brakes and uh, it pivots on the clutch as well. You got that guy right there, and then you have one on the other side of the tractor which would be considered, you know, like the passenger. 
I was lucky enough that they went ahead and accepted grease and uh, I just kind of fill them up until you start seeing goo coming out the uh, the edges kind of like right here. Now on the front end loader the Zerk fittings were just a little bit different. They do not screw in. I believe they're the uh, the style that you punch in. Zerks went ahead and accepted grease. You can kind of see uh, I used the red high temp stuff. So they all accepted grease except for the two that are on the very bottom. This is the underside of the bucket and I'm sure someone's going to have a comment to say about me just sitting underneath a, a bucket that's not supported but I don't plan on being here for very long. We had to go ahead and change these guys out because they were packed up with dirt from being drug into the ground and stuff like that. And this one and that other one here on the other side need to go ahead and be replaced. Luckily I did have some of the SAE ones because I'm they're the ones that fit in there. So that's what I went ahead and used. I believe that the this loader itself was an aftermarket even though it's kind of painted to match. It is a aftermarket one by the manufacturer I believe Great Bend. They actually have a, a tag right here. I'm not sure how I'm going how well I'm going to get in there. Well, let's see. It says Great Bend Manufacturing Company Incorporated. The only setback I had, I was able to grease pretty much any place that this loader pivots at, which is here, there, and down there. And then there's one right here, and I completely forgot to grease it. So, but the ones I could not get to were these ones right here, mainly because I needed to tilt the bucket down, and like I said, now I can't start it. Okay, next up on the list is uh, putting on a new tire for this Mitsubishi Sato. I went ahead and uh, I had to go find this guy. It was in Oregon on Craigslist, and I had to ship it all the way here, and it was in pretty rough condition. I went ahead and sandblasted it and cleaned it up as best I could. You can see here the uh, the rim is um, a little bit kind of thin. This is really the only bad spot. The tire I picked up off of uh, eBay, it was two of them for like, I don't know, like 80 bucks. So the main reason I needed to get a new rim was because, well, let me just show you the old one. So here's the old rim and it was wobbling kind of bad when I was using it, but I didn't pay too much mind to it until one day after I was really using the loader, I kind of noticed, uh, well, it started to crack up on me. This is, uh, this is after me cleaning it. It was uh, pretty much covered in, in gear oil. There's the, the back side of it. Now, these rims are kind of hard to find. I've been watching eBay. I've been looking on Craigslist. I found like one guy in Oregon, and he only had one. And The other side, well, instead of them being all cracked and falling apart, the lugs were loose, so now the holes are all wallered out. So I should have showed you guys a before picture, but that's pretty much everything I just got done cleaning off this thing. I bought this from a guy up in the mountains, and he used to use this tractor with just the front end loader to clean up uh, his road whenever he had a real bad rainstorm and it all washed out. So this thing was covered in what's basically like river runoff road base. I mean it was just this really gritty nasty sand and what it has done is it has gotten inside the seal there and this thing was just plugged up with uh, that gritty granity sand road base stuff. Now I think it's eaten up the seals. You got one seal right here and then you have another seal. I know yeah, you probably can't see that well but another seal right here and this whole area, see how you can kind of see daylight through it, was just completely filled up with that, uh, that gritty sand stuff. So I'm going to put this tire on and I'm going to call around and see what I can get for a seal kit. But I'm going to go ahead and throw this tire on and just kind of add it to the list of things I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need to do. I was hoping to have this kind of like a one night job, maybe two night job, but I think this thing's going to be sitting in my garage for a while. I went ahead and checked the level of the uh, diff fluid in the front axle and it was pretty low so I went ahead and topped it off. This will help me figure out how bad my, my leak is right here on my seals. And a uh, word of advice is uh, a nice long funnel, uh, you know, uh, put in that hole and then you can fill it up about right here. That, uh, that helps out a lot but 
you need to pour it very slowly. Either my breather tube is plugged up or I filled it up too much. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how much is going to be supposed to be in there. And I didn't mean to fill it up to the top and I don't think it's quite there but it's pretty close and that oil just uh, it stopped flowing. And it didn't st start flowing again until I, I took the tube out. So yeah, don't be like me. Just uh, pour it in nice and slow and save yourself a mess. But I'll, uh, I'll probably see how bad it leaks. Uh, I think the bearings are okay for right now. If I end up seeing a whole bunch of uh, gear oil on my, on my brand new rim, then I'll, I'll go ahead and, and change the seat. So here's the Zerk fitting kit that I picked up on Amazon. It came with a metric and an SAE. And out of the metric, I ended up replacing four of those guys. Uh, these ones that were at a 45, I ended up having to unscrew the entire thing because if I unscrewed just this part right here, it was a fine thread. But, uh, and I didn't have any of those in my kit. And it's got quite a few pieces. It's mostly M6s and M10s. That's pretty much the two sizes that it came with. And I would call this a coarse thread. And that's pretty much what these guys were. And this is what these were as well. The SAE, I only needed two of them. These were the ones that were on the bucket that were on the bottom, so they were just completely packed with dirt. And uh, I just had to use two of these guys, and they worked like a champ, and I'm really glad I had them. The next thing I want to go ahead and share with you guys is what oil filter I ended up using. I ended up using a Napa Gold uh, 1334. The only thing that was kind of weirding me out was that Napa's computer told me to use that guy, but what was on this, the oil filter... Uh, currently was a 1356 by the time I compared the two it turns out this was just a slightly smaller oil filter with the same gasket uh, area as uh, the slightly larger one this one's a little bit bigger so if we take this guy and kind of compare him to the to what's on there now and like I said that's the 1334 it's just a little bit smaller but it still fits on there so I decided to go ahead with the bigger filter I did pick up one of these guys and I am gonna go ahead and use it since I already bought it but I think from now on I'm just gonna go ahead and go with the one that Snappa's computer recommends so let's go ahead and just recap what exactly went down last night I tried to do some basic maintenance on this tractor and in the process I've pretty much spilt oil of every kind on this floor but uh, let's uh, try to move on. I'll, I'll show you what we've got going on. So I got me a replacement uh, oil plug uh, bolt. And it was just from the auto parts store. It's uh, This is what it's labeled as. The M18-1.5. It came with a little gasket right here. This guy right here. And then I went ahead and bought some copper washers. They came with it. This is the uh, this guy right here. Just copper gasman assortment. I'm going to go ahead and try to use both of them. See if uh, that keeps it from leaking. I know this guy had a crush washer on it. But I have no idea how long that's been in use. Or if they've uh, recently replaced it. But hey, at least now we can go ahead and plug up the oil pan. Fill it up with oil. Let's go ahead and do that first. And then uh, I'll look through the manual and get an answer for you as far as uh, how much oil it takes. The oil change is done. The owner's manual said to use about three liters and I've used, let's see, this thing contains 3.78 so apparently I must have about, well, 0.78 of a liter left. It's right there on the dipstick, it's right on the line. Since the oil filter has to go in horizontally, as you can see that guy right there, I wasn't able to fill it up very much, but I was able to uh, get some oil in it and then screw it on, which kind of led to me spilling more oil. But I always know I've always been told to fill pre-fill your uh, oil filters so that you don't starve the engine for oil at the uh, first startup. Also, here is your dipstick for your motor, and as you can see, 
I'm right there on the line. You can't really see it. If I were to wipe it off, you would uh, you, you'd get a better idea of it. But I'm doing it one-handed, so you're just gonna have to go with it. On a fun little note, the previous owner that had this tractor did not know where the dipstick was at. It took me about two minutes to find it, and when I did check it, it turned out to be a quart low. So this thing uses three liters. Uh, it was uh, he poured in an entire quart and it brought up directly to the uh, line. So as you can imagine, when I changed this oil, that stuff was black. Now we're focusing our attention to the transmission fluid. And as soon as I get this uh, pan out of the way, I can get a better angle to show you where the two drain plugs are at. And I don't know how much is going to come out of the other one, but I got the one pouring right now. I started draining it last night. It overfilled the one tub that I had that didn't already have oil in it, and it just got everywhere. I haven't looked it up in the manual yet, but this thing probably holds around probably like three, three and a half, maybe even four gallons of uh, transmission fluid. 